pleasure within the reach of everyone. Some of the immigrants may have fallen ill, but it's hard to know how many. The immigrants working at Duffy's Cut may have come to the United States with cholera, or they may have contracted it when they arrived, but no one will ever know. It seems likely that some of the workers died of cholera. It was listed on documents as their official cause of death, but given evidence of beatings and bullet wounds, it's impossible to know exactly what caused the women to perish. Cholera broke out. The immigrant workers tried to take refuge in nearby houses, but were turned away. During the summer of 1832, over 900 people died of cholera in the Delaware Valley of Pennsylvania. When the disease first hit, some men fled to nearby houses to take refuge. They were turned away and forced to go back to camp where only the blacksmith would provide medical help. He was also the man tasked with burying the bodies of the dead. He placed them in a shallow ditch near the railroad with no markers or ceremony. Irish workers faced low wages and miserable conditions. Immigrants planning to work construction on the growing infrastructure in the United States faced difficult and dangerous conditions in 1881. More than 30,000 American railroad workers were killed or injured on the job. Many railroads offered no compensation, nor did the courts, which ruled that workers shared the blame for their injuries and deaths even when railroads had the ability to use equipment that would improve safety. Traveling across the Atlantic for weeks was treacherous enough. The immigrants at Duffy's Cut were probably paid about $10 to $15 a month, with miserable lodging and an allowance for whiskey. The workers lived in a shanty town, and because there was widespread animosity toward Irish Catholics at the time, were incredibly isolated. They started work in June, and were required to work through the brutally hot summer months. Tragically, many immigrants were dead within six weeks of coming to America. Fifty-seven of the immigrant laborers Philip Duffy hired when he got the bid to build the railroad, Mile 59, now known as Duffy's Cut, were a sturdy-looking band of the sons of Aaron. Records indicate that the workers came off a ship called the John Stamp, which arrived from Derry, Ireland. The passenger manifest lists young men like William Devine, aged 21, George Quigley, aged 22, and 18-year-old John Ruddy. There were some women on board too. Among them were Eliza Byans, aged 22, and 20-year-old Eliza Diven. Given the task of building one of the most difficult parts of the line, the men spent no more than a few weeks working before they all died. There was a cholera outbreak in the area at the time, and it's likely that many men perished from the disease. Investigators are unsure, however, how many died and whether it was the bullets in their skulls or the fatal illness that ultimately caused their demise. The immigrants' work was grueling. Constructing a railroad is tough work in and of itself, but it's particularly hard when you have to level out an entire hill before you can put down tracks. Immigrant laborers were seen as disposable, which is why they got the most physically challenging work. In the case of Duffy's Cut, they were required to flatten a piece of land before they could put down the rails, which required moving sticky heavy clay, a lot of stones, shale, and rotten rock. Irish immigrants then had to the use the soil from the flattened hill to fill in a neighboring valley. Amtrak stopped the excavation project. The mass grave is 30 feet underground and too close to an Amtrak track to reach. Geophysicist Tim Bechtel said, 
that he doesn't blame the company for not being keen on excavating there since Amtrak owns the property. Bill and Frank Watson, the leaders of the project. The railroad company may have covered up the immigrants' deaths. The Watson brothers, William Watson, history professor at Immaculata University, and Frank Watson, a reverend at a local church, discovered an old file in their family's belongings indicating that there was a discrepancy between the railroad's official records about the deaths at Duffy's Cut and those reported by local newspapers at the time. The file belonged to Martin Clement, who eventually became the president of Pennsylvania Railroad. Clement kept detailed records that showed 57 men died at the camp, while newspapers only reported eight deaths. They became convinced that there was more to the story, which possibly includes a cover-up by the railroad company. The skeletons exhibited signs of bullet wounds and blood force trauma. Records show that eight people died of cholera in 1982 while constructing a railroad at Duffy's Cut. But Bill Watson, a history professor at Immaculata University, believes the death count is much higher. The team has excavated seven bodies at the site, and many of them show signs of blunt force trauma and bullet wounds, leading investigators to believe that cholera was not their actual cause of death. In one of the first skeletons scientists excavated, they discovered that the man had been struck on the head, prompting further investigation. Anthropologist Dr. Matt Patterson discovered blunt force trauma in three more sets of remains and a bullet in a fourth. Because the immigrants were supposed to have died of cholera, the evidence raised more questions than offered answers. Were the workers killed before they contracted cholera, or were their murders considered mercy killings for victims suffering severely from the disease? Historians continue to ask these questions as the search for more bodies continues. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and like and comment down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then take care bye